from Pages and Pens and I am here with my 5k q a can't believe that I hit 5k before my one year birthday this is actually my one year booktube birthday face tonight is the live show for my booktube birthday I am pre-filming some videos before the live show starts and one of them is my q a so we're gonna go ahead and jump into your questions because you guys gave me a ton of them and some of them are really amazing and I want to get to as many as I possibly can. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted questions. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much to each and every one of the 5,000 bookish friends that I have on this channel. You mean the world to me and I am so thankful for the community that I am building around myself here on this channel and within booktube in general. It has been one of the most amazing years full of growth and discovery and great books and bad books and and strong opinions and discussions and I have adored every single second of it. It's been an amazing year. A lot of you know if you follow me on Instagram that I've had some changes lately. I did get let go from my job of 10 years because the position was just no longer needed and I am between jobs. I am job hunting right now but as of filming this I have not found another job. So initially I really wanted to do a giveaway but I am just not in a financial position right now to do a giveaway. I hope to do those again in the future. I did one at 2k really do want to give back to you guys as much as humanly possible but it's just not feasible for me to do that right now just know that I love and appreciate you and the lack of a giveaway is not a reflection on you it's a reflection on me job hunting I don't have books pulled and I don't have answers ready so get ready to see me mumble a lot you ready for this Let's go. Devious Rose said, if you could pick, say, three things that I love most or expect most when it comes to YA novels, what would they be? So what I love most from YA novels currently is the diversity. I think that's such a new thing in YA and it shouldn't be. I think that's something I expect from YA now and it's something that I'm really, really glad that I'm seeing more of. I also really love that I'm seeing more in YA a respect for and a language towards the readers that is more reasonable. We're not dumbing down our YA characters anymore. We're not dumbing down the language for YA readers anymore. And I don't think that's just a reflection of older people reading YA. I think it's a reflection of authors starting to trust their readers. So that's really exciting to me. I also am excited to see more technology, cursing, sexual situations being discussed. I think that YA can have romance. YA should have technology in it. YA should have periods. That's what I'm expecting to see more and more. You're starting to see some of it, but I'm expecting to see it more. Laura Elizabeth said, for your Q&A, if you could read any book or series from the perspective of a villain, which book series or villain would it be and why? I mean, how interesting would a book purely from Voldemort's standpoint be? I mean, it would be crazy, but it could be interesting. Maybe Hook, maybe um, Jareth, maybe like a whole book from the Goblin King's viewpoint could be interesting. I think that could be really cool. Donald Love's Literature would like to know Lord or Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey? Christina, what would your perfect relaxation, stress-free, do whatever you want if money wasn't an option kind of day be? It would involve a swinging bed, like not a hammock, but like fully like a bed that's suspended on ropes that could swing, overlooking a lake or something, a really good cold lemon water and books, maybe a massage in the middle of the day, little like noshi food like cheese and crackers or hummus and carrots. Like I don't even want to stop for a full meal and I want to just read and relax and maybe have my music playing through like speakers. Maybe like the surround of this bed frame has speakers built into it. I can just listen to music and there's got to be like a like a springish 70s breezy but sunny kind of a day. Oh that sounds lovely. I would like that. Like a spa like setting but for reading. And I don't want to see or hear anybody. That would be amazing. That would be it. Jessica wants to know my favorite high school memory. I don't know. I had really, really good friends in high school. Like I had a lot of positive experiences in high school. Once I knew I had gotten into college, that was really exciting. Or once I got into college and then felt like I could cut school and drive to Long Beach Island with my friend for days off to go like hang out at a beach shack with a whole bunch of surfer dudes that I don't even know how we met. Sharon wants to know how I managed to get so many books read and still do other things. Audiobooks, a lot of audiobooks, and then I never turn on my television. I can't tell you the last time I turned on my television. So where a lot of people fall into Netflix or TV shows or TV series or movies, 
I've really just been focusing on reading and I have not watched a single thing. I think it's just something that I've made a priority and that's how I get it done. Gabriella wants to know my favorite pen or highlighter for annotating. My favorite pens in general are these Sarasa gel pens. I love these. So these I use a lot for annotating, but I also have another one. I have to get it for you. I also have a whole bunch of these, which are like feather quill pens and they have a really, really fine point and I really like these. So these are definitely a favorite as well because they write really thin, they don't have too much ink, but the, those in the Sarasa do not go through the page really. So I'm able to use both of those comfortably and I just prefer writing with them. So I want a really good hand feel if I'm gonna be writing like that, but I don't highlight as of right now. I just annotate and make notes or doodles or stuff. Little Wonderful said, songs that I associate with my short stories uh, in Shoot Down the Wendy Bird. And instead of that, I'm going to share some photo inspiration. A lot of the short stories that I wrote were prompts. So I had either a sentence that was a prompt or a picture that was a prompt, and then those stories were a result of those pictures or those sentences. In specific, I have Pink Hydrangea. I know for sure that was a prompt. Bewitched was also a prompt. There's a good number that were picture prompts that I can put up on the screen for you. So hopefully that's interesting to you. If you've read my book or you have my book, you can take a look at the picture and then see how it inspired the story. Chelsea Dowling Reads wants to know my three favorite books I've read since starting my channel. Six of Crows, The Hate You Give, the Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, so a contemporary, a fantasy, and a sci-fi. It's pretty diverse. Current celebrity crushes she wants to know as well. Uh, Keanu Reeves always, Jason Statham always, Kate Beckinsale always. Straight as they come, but Kate Beckinsale is gorgeous. Current favorite song. Um, right now it's Suit and Tie by Judah and the Lions. Is that the name of the band? I don't know what they're saying for the majority of that song, but the beat, I don't know why. I can't get enough of that song. And it's fitting right now. I'm between jobs. I'm trying to figure out who I am and just slow down the world so I can do that. So that's my favorite. Favorite book crush that is not Rowan and Chelsea, how dare you? Mal from the Stage Dive series because he's everything. Or Reed from the Royal series or Easton from the Royal series or any of the Royals, except for Gideon. He's weird. I'd even take Callum. Favorite short story that I've written, how dare you? I could never pick. Yeah, I really don't. I don't know if I could pick one. I do like the short walk home. And then people really started pushing me when I posted that to continue the story, which is why that is like one of the only ones that is continued because I like having it unended. I like some of my stories being that way. And then you kind of having to fill in the spaces or decide what maybe happens next. People went nuts when that was all I had. So I kind of fleshed out the story a little bit more but I was really happy with just the first part of that even. My favorite birthday present I ever received, I did receive some great ones recently. Ludo as a bookmark, and Chelsea gave me The Hating Game, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but no, my favorite birthday present ever of life is the fact that two years ago, on my birthday, my youngest niece, Edie, was born, and 
I know she's not my present, she's my sister's daughter, but that little girl has my heart and she shares my birthday and it was by far like the best present ever to be an aunt for the fourth time and just absolutely love that little baby. And then will I come to LA? Ye yes, I will. You let me get some money first girl and I'm there. Shannon Quinn wants to know my favorite indie or lesser known authors. Amanda Lovelace who wrote The Princess Saves Herself in this one and Aaron Watt who is a writing duo is actually self-published as well and that is the Royal series. So pretty well known, not necessarily lesser known, but I do love both of those. And if you have any other indie author recommendations, definitely let me know. The majority of them seem to be in the romance department. A lot of those are self-published. And then also uh, Ashley Sapp, who just wrote Wild Becomes You. I have not read it yet, but I adore her, so I'm counting her. Then Shannon also asked, favorite personality trait and feature? Um, I don't know if she meant myself or others, but personality traits I look for are kindness and loyalty and features. Usually the eyes. I'm drawn to people's eyes. I make a lot of extreme eye contact. It can make people uncomfortable. I don't know. Is that weird? Have I made it weird? Stephanie wants to know... Uh, how do I decide what topics to film on? Whatever feels right, whatever you guys have left me feedback on, whatever's worked in the past, whatever I have fun filming is kind of what I film on. And I don't have any way that I decide to do something or not do something. If it feels right, if I feel like I can lend something unique to a certain topic, then I go for it. She asked, why do I love you so much? I don't know, Stephanie, but I'm so happy you do. What song do I love even though I can't relate to it at all? I don't know. I think I can find ways to relate to the majority of music and the ones that I really, really love, I definitely relate to, but I can appreciate it even if I don't. My favorite current or all-time favorite television show, I don't watch TV that often. I loved Lost Girl on the Sci-Fi Network. And that's no longer on. I also really loved Friends because I'm basic like that. I loved Castle in the early years because I loved the dynamic of like the team. Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, like whoa. Supernatural, I love. Will and Grace, I really enjoyed. Karen was my spirit animal. Sylvia asks, how do I decide which books get reviewed on my channel? Essentially whatever I think is timely, whatever I feel like I can add something to, if I have strong feelings one way or the other or something really gripped me, then it's probably something I want to talk about. Otherwise, sometimes I'll just let it go unmentioned. I also do a lot of like impromptu reviews on my Instagram stories. So sometimes it's difficult to remember what I've talked about where. But in terms of what gets distinct reviews here, it's whatever feedback I get from you guys. So if there's a book you really want me to review that you know I've read because of good reads or something you know I've talked about in a wrap up, definitely comment and let me know. I'm always willing to put different, you know, reviews together. But essentially, I've got to have strong feelings one way or another to warrant a review like that. What series or books got me into YA? I would say it was Harry Potter. I read Harry Potter in my sophomore year of college. And I think at that point, the first three books were out. And then I had to wait for subsequent books. So that kind of got me back into reading in general. And then I would say the Hunger Games or Divergent series got me back into it again after that. Why did I decide to write a YA instead of adult or middle grade? Originally, my short stories were not geared towards YA. They were adult and there was a lot more vulgarity and explicitness in it. I did know that I wanted to write a novel series that was YA fantasy based. So I decided that if I had a base in YA or something that was already previously published in the YA, I would hopefully do better. So I wanted my name to kind of already be in YA. I write very dark therapy for when I have like dark depressive times is writing. So a lot of my writing can lean really dark. It's definitely not suited to middle grade because of that darkness. If anything, it would have gone adult. What do I think of chiclet and mysteries? Mysteries I'm getting into more. Chiclet, not as much, but I'm starting to enjoy contemporaries and that kind of stuff a little bit more. I'm not a, as big of a fan of literary fiction, honestly. My rom book talk, Steph Uncensored, asked, have I ever been to a book signing? No, I have not actually. And what author would I fangirl over meeting? Lee Bardugo. Because she's a combination of badass writer and Stevie Nicks. And I don't know if I could talk if I was in front of her. I just love Lee Bardugo. Emily asked, what are some books or concept for books that I think I would have loved if another author had written them? Winter Song by S.J. Jones, because it had such potential and it did not follow through for me. Probably also The Raven Cycle, 
because I just don't vibe with Maggie Steve Otter, but I could see how it could have been cool. A List of Cages I think could have been done so much better than it was. I did not like that book at all. I will have my review of it linked up above. Rosalie asked, does reading more broadly change what I want to write or how you write? And yes, I think that it's been a really long time since I've been hardcore into writing but the longer I wait before I go back to write the more I realize I want to make changes to things because I'm realizing not only what I prefer to read and what I want to see in my books but also what the booktube community itself is expecting out of books. That's not to say that it's going to change the core of my message or what I want to say. I think that some of my characters have already evolved more because I'm realizing that they were either problematic or certain like themes that I had going on or not ones that I want to perpetuate. So absolutely those things have changed the way that I write. Laura asked, my question to you is what made you want to become a YouTuber? I found booktube and I realized that I could add my voice to it, that this could be a part of YouTube that I really connect it with. I already had the setup. I was doing beauty videos and my channel really wasn't growing and I was feeling lost in that community. Really hard to niche yourself there and I found this corner of YouTube and was like, nope, these are my people and decided to just go for it. I've always been really comfortable with public speaking. I've always been very comfortable in front of a camera. So this really wasn't too big of a jump for me. Britannia asked, if Gandalf asked me to destroy the ring and said that I could choose one character from any book to help me find it, who would I bring along? I need a sidekick. Nikolai from the Grisha trilogy. I feel like he would keep me entertained and he seems kind of sexy and also capable and competent and resourced. Like he's got the resources to help me get where I need to go. And he's already used to like darkness and quests and I dig him. So him. Kelsey asked, fan cast my favorite read of 2017 so far. I don't really do fan casts. Like I don't picture people while I'm reading and I don't picture actors that I think would fit them. I especially don't keep up with the young actors the way that the majority of people seem to because I'm so far out of their age group so it feels creepy. So to cast a YA with younger actors I don't keep up with TV or movies uh, with that age group so that's super difficult for me. I am really excited though about the casting that is taking place for The Hate You Give which is probably my favorite book of this year so far and I'm really happy with the way that that's being cast. So I'll stick with that. I think that might be everything guys. I'm gonna go ahead and end this here because I know that there's more on Twitter but I can't go through and search through right now and I think I covered all the ones in my comments that were to date right now. If I find any other really great ones I will add them into another video but thank you so much to everybody who asked questions. I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun answering them. I hope you had a lot of fun listening to my answers. But thank you so much to everybody who is a part of my channel, who is actively commenting, actively engaged in my different buddy reads, in my live shows, in my chat rooms, whether it's the live drunk show, whether it's Java the Librarians, whether you're buddy reading with me, or if you do none of that and you just passively watch and you never comment, or if you watch and comment all the time and share my videos, no matter what you're doing to engage with my channel, I just, I appreciate you. I appreciate my growth. Know that I don't take it for granted and that I appreciate everybody who's a part of the community that I'm building around me. And I'm so thankful for you. And I'm so thankful for this last year of my life. And I'm really looking forward to how this channel grows going here forward and continuing to try to come up with original creative content ideas for you guys hopefully getting to some bookish events this year and doing more vlogging and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about the year to come and thank you for the year that I've already had here. That's it for this video. If you've liked it, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in my next video. Mm -hmm.